Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for being here this, this evening. A beautiful Christmas Eve. A time where we set aside every year to celebrate the coming of the Christ child. It's been done for centuries upon centuries. As we stop and pause in the silence of an evening and remember just how much our God loves us. God loved us so much, He gave us His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Would you join with me in prayer? Father, we love you. And God, we praise you tonight as we gather to give you thanks for your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for leaving paradise. For leaving perfection. <coughs> and coming to be with us. Emmanuel, God with us. God, thank you for looking over and forgiving us of our sins. And Jesus, thank you for taking our sins to the cross. Now, Lord, as we pause to give you thanks and honor this evening, may we feel your presence in a mighty and powerful way. We pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. You'll turn on the back or on the inside cover of your bulletin. There's a responsive reading there. If you would join with me and read responsively. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mount of the Lord hath spoken it. I'm going to ask if you will. Stand and sing with us hymn number 93, It Came Upon a Midnight Creek.
one commandment in that one. The first week is hope. The second week is peace. The third week is joy. The fourth week is love. Tonight, because we celebrate the birth of the Savior tonight. The life of Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. A promise kept. By definition, a baby is dependent on adults for everything. Food, shelter, protection, and love. A baby is unable to use logic and reason. It needs constant attention. But the baby Jesus, this child created the world. This child existed before anything or anyone. This child was God. Imagine. He's the creator of the world and suddenly he feels cold and hungry. Imagine becoming human was not a twist of fate or a punishment from a higher being. It was a choice. God chose to give up everything to become nothing. This child was a king. A king in a dirty stable. Wrapped in rags. But a king with a plan. This child would bring hope. Not just a wish, but the confidence that God would defeat Satan. That good would win over evil. This child would bring peace. Even in the midst of great suffering and trials. A peace that assures his followers that he is in control even when it feels like nobody is. This child would bring love. A love that would never be taken away. A love that is beyond our understanding. And this child would bring joy. For he would deliver us. Because He is Emmanuel. God with us. If you will stand and join us as we sing all the time that we hymn him number 86.
Fala, ai. Como é, ai? Is it really sad? I, I just want you to think now. I understand there are kids in here, and I think that's phenomenal. And I'm excited if you hear one scream, you just go praise the Lord. Okay. Because I remember being that, that parent and having a little one on the back road, trying to keep them quiet and just, you know, doing whatever I could to keep them quiet. And the truth is. That's new life. And it is awesome to hear kids. But the idea of silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy and so tender and fine. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night. Darkness flies all the light. Shepherds hear the angels sing, Alleluia. Hail the King. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night. Holy night. Luke 2. 8 and following. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swallowing clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which is the Lord, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who were lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. Silent night. I think not. All these angels appearing. Now it's silent in the heart because of God, but silent night. There's excitement. And, and you know what? There's no okay. it's, it's excitement in children. Now it may be for other reasons, but I'll be honest, we need to really be teaching children the real reason for Christmas. Silent night. Silent night. Now, the one thing that I noticed, verse 12 says this. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Lord, you got an night. Wait a minute. The sign's going to be this baby lying in the manger with swaddling clothes. What about all these angels that showed up? That's a pretty good sign, isn't it? <laughs> so, I want you to think with me for a moment. Jesus came. If you look behind me up in the baptistry, 
there is what may what a manger may have looked like. And behind it is a cross. Jesus came with a cross in mind. He knew what was coming, but yet he came because he loved you and me. I want you to think back over this last year, maybe even just this last month, maybe this last week, maybe today. What sign has God given to you that says, I love you? As I sat in the office and watched folks come up the elevator, I saw Marshall, which is a sign to me that God loves me. Marshall hasn't been out of the house in quite a while, but Marshall, I'm glad you're here. And it's a great for my heart to see you here tonight. I saw Miss Lita come off the elevator, get off, in the wheelchair. Says, wow, God, amazing. And I watched others come in and I look out and I see you. And I think to myself, God loves you. And God loves me. And what a sign that is. I'm going to send you a sign, God said. That sign is Jesus. And that sign is the cross that you should never forget. Because Jesus died on that cross. I do not think we can celebrate Christmas without focusing on the cross. Because that was the main purpose. Jesus came. He lived a man's life. Fully God. Fully God. He went to the cross carried my sins and yours with him. And he died. He was raised on the third day. He had conquered hell and death. And as believers, we have that. That, ladies and gentlemen, is our sign. Look. Look around. And listen to the children later. And look at family. And look at what God is doing. After all, it's Christmas Eve. Why are you here? To celebrate Christ's birth. It's a sacrament. You don't have to look far. God loves you so much. He sent His one and only Son. If you keep reading, glory to God in the highest, the angels sang, and on earth peace to men on whom His favor rests. When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said, one to another. Let's go to bed. Let's go find this Savior. Tonight, I'm here to share with you this. You don't have to look far. He's here. And He loves you. He came as lowly as you come. In a manger. Now, I imagine in a manger it's probably pretty silent, but the exception of a <laughs> or a move. The cry of the Silent night. Holy night. Please. 
don't forget the holiness that surrounds the night. God bless you. Would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for the opportunity to be here on Christmas Eve in your house to worship you, to give you thanks for your son. Now, Lord, as we take time in our schedule to pause and commune with you this evening, Impress upon our hearts the love that you've given to us so that we might share it with others. Pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. I'm going to ask now the deacons would come and just join me on this front row. This evening, as a part of Christmas Eve service. We have communion. Communion is a time where we remember what Jesus did for us, his love for us, and also his last supper with his disciples. As we partake of what we call the Lord's Supper, focus on the manger, focus on the cross, and focus on how much He loves you and me. Yeah. Uh -huh.
Thank you for coming as an enemy, as a baby. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for being broken for us. Now, Lord, we ask that you to give us about our sin. Pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.
Continue to focus. And think what it must have been like that night. You know, I said silent night. 
Maybe not. But I want you to think, Silent Night was broken because of joy. Because of joy. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And God said, let there be. Light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated it. Separated the light from the darkness. You can't separate light from darkness. You can take away hope so you think. You can take away joy. So you think you can take away peace. And even love. But the one that represents all four of these is Christ. And there's still peace. The darkness that surrounds this world in which we live. It's not much different than it was in those days. There wasn't a whole lot of hope and there wasn't a whole lot of joy and there wasn't a whole lot of peace. But God promised. And He fulfilled His promise with His Son, Jesus Christ. In the beginning, God created light. Jesus was there in the beginning, as we learned from John 1.1. 1, 1. 
And then if we look at John, chapter 8, Jesus said, I am the light. It was there in the beginning. And now, He's there. And now, He's here. The light of the world. The Christ can represent Jesus and the light of the world. I would like to invite the children to come down Bring your candles, and we're going to light your candle from the Christ candle. And then I want you to take your candle back and light those around you, those on your pew, those with your family, and then start sharing the light. Because what I want you to understand, you know what we learned about the shepherds when we read it? It said the shepherds came. It said the shepherds came to find the Christ child and then they left and went and told others about the joy and the celebration of the love that came down from God, His Son. Jesus. Tell you what, let's stop down. Let's start down on the bottom down there. <laughs> Keep going. Let's go all the way down the bottom.
See, this is what the shepherds did. They took the light that they had been given and they shared it with others. You notice how dark it was in here before we started this. By the way, children can be amazing carriers of the Word. Now, you know, what happens if you hold them up? You hold them up. Oh my. Mm. What a difference it makes. You put them down. Do you see the difference when you shine your light brightly? What others can see in your life. How others can see Jesus in you. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. This, I have come for you. We're going to sing joy to the world. I don't know where Bonnie is. There she is, over here. Let's sing joy to the world. And think about that night. Think about the angels coming to the shepherds on that silent night. And then think of the joy that follow. Let's sing together. Amen.